In this video, I'm going to show you a really simple and fun way that you can add fun color uh, motifs and patterns to an already existing piece of knitted fabric without needing to um, do color work in Tarsia to create that. It's something that's added after the fact and it is called duplicate stitch. Duplicate stitch or Swiss darning as it is sometimes called, is a decorative stitch worked over stockinette stitch. It is a method of duplicating the original stitches with a contrasting color, creating patterns. And so I'm going to start by showing you the anatomy of a stitch. So here is a diagram of what knitted fabric looks like and how it's created. It's created in rows and you can see that it's a series of interlocking loops and if we follow one strand it interlocks underneath the row below and underneath the row on top. And what it does is it creates a series of V stitches like so. We can see that in our fabric. You can see that there are many columns of V stitches. Here is a V and it runs all along one row. So let's look at it up close as to how this yarn travels. Let's start with this stitch right here. Here's the bottom. It comes up. It goes behind and then it comes back down and goes behind. Then it comes back up and travels behind comes back up. You can see how it would continue doing that just as we saw here. So we're going to do this with a contrasting color of yarn. But first what we're going to need is a chart to work from because duplicate stitch is typically worked using a chart and if you do any cross stitch you will be familiar with how this looks. So I have a chart here that I have prepared to demonstrate with. Now each of these squares represents one stitch, but you can see it's not actually a square but a rectangle because a knit stitch is actually wider than it is tall. And every square represents one stitch being one V. So essentially this is our rectangle. What we want to do is begin by counting how many rows that over from one side or the other that we're going to start with. I like to start in this top left corner and I have already counted over that it is 15 rows or 15 stitches from the left and four rows down from the top. So now let's talk about yarn. The yarn that I use to create this swatch is worsted weight. And when we talk about the weight, it's actually referencing the thickness of the yarn. And so we want to use a yarn that is the same in thickness or very close to. So I have chosen another worsted weight yarn and you can see the thick thickness is very close. I mean, it's not an exact match, but it's very close. But I wouldn't want to choose something that is a fingering weight yarn, which is much thinner. Let's compare these two together because it would not cover the stitch. We would see a lot of this white background behind it. But if we chose one that is 
much thicker than this yarn, what would happen instead is our fabric would warp. It would warp and buckle instead of laying flat and we want it to lay flat. Now I've prepared this swatch by steam blocking it. I pinned it out on my ironing board and then with the steam on high on my iron, I just held it above the material. I didn't touch it down to the material and steamed it and let it cool and um, dry completely. And that just took a couple minutes. And that just makes it a little bit easier to work with because now it's nice and flat and I can tell what this um, gauge is really easily. So I have threaded a needle with about a wingspan worth of yarn, approximately two yards. And we're going to get started by counting our, our stitches and our rows. So we need to do four rows down, 15 stitches in from the left. So let's do that. So here is our very first stitch. So what we're going to do is we're going to, you know what, I have this, I'm gonna turn it the other direction. So our Vs are running this way with our first stitch. Let me show you. My very first stitch is right here, but you can see my Vs run this way. So let me turn it around. Now, if you have something that has to be right side up, upside down, and that's the case with what you have, then what I would do is I would start here and start counting with, with that part so that you have your Vs running up and down. So instead of starting right here where they're down, if I move over half a stitch, it's now running up and down this way. But I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to start in this top left corner. Here's my very first stitch. I'm gonna count down one, two, three, four, and then 15. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So this is, oh, right there, I almost lost it. This is where I want to begin, and I have a removable stitch marker that I am going to place behind the two legs of that V right there. So now I know that this is where I'm going to begin. So I have my yarn in my tapestry needle, which is a blunt tip needle. Um, and I have left a bit of a working tail, no knot. And I'm going to come up from behind on the bottom of that V and pull my yarn through leaving a tail for me to work in. And now that I know where I'm beginning, I can take off my stitch marker. And let's look at our chart. I need to do one, two, three stitches. Okay, here we go. Up, behind, now it's really important that you keep your tension the same. Don't pull it really tight. You don't wanna keep it so loose that it's going to be floppy. And then down into that same hole. And then we're going to go one more over to the right. You can see we don't put our needle in this hole, we need to put it in this one where the next V starts at the base of the next V. Up. Behind. And I'm just making sure my stitches are nice and even with the tension and down. Now when you get started, it doesn't look so great until you start adding more stitches. So one more. Okay, so we've created the first row 
of stitches. One, two, three. Now let's come down. I like to work back and forth and back and forth. You'll see right here though, I have a triangle instead of a full rectangle. That is a half stitch. I could do a complete stitch there, but I'm going to do a half stitch so I can demonstrate how to do that. So that means we have three full stitches directly below the row above and a half stitch on either side. So I'm going to just bring my yarn down and let's find where the next V is directly below. Right here is where the opening is. Let me show you. Here is the V right below it. They just stack. So it would be right here is where I would start. But I need to do one half of the V on the side. So here is the row below. I need this stitch right here only. So I'm going to come and I'm going to come in from the bottom of the V. I've caught my yarn underneath, which you can do that. You can weave in your ends as you go, but I will show you how to do it after. And I'm going to do duplicate stitch over one leg of that stitch. So now we need to do the three underneath it. And um, I am right-handed, so I find it much easier to work right to left than left to right but I like to go back and forth so it can be done either way. So we're going to come up in the bottom, go behind the stitch on top. And now it's a little bit easier for me right-handed because I can just keep doing like a sewing method where I go down and back up in one motion. And pull the yarn through down and back up in one motion. Now this will complete the three stitches below, but I need half of the next stitch so I can still do down and back up in one motion. I thought I caught that yarn again, the tail, but I didn't. And then the last half stitch just goes down only, not back up on this row. So we have just completed the top two rows of this flower. So I will just keep working back and forth and one thing that can be done, what do we do when we come to these areas? There's a couple of options. So I started right here and worked this way, then here, then I will come down here, then here, then here. What I can do is skip under two and pick up this one and then work down, skip under and pick up this one, skip under and pick up this one. After that, I can come pick up that stitch and then start down here and work my way back and forth. The other option is to work like this, and then you come afterwards and just pick up these at the very end, but that leaves a lot more tails to weave in later, and I don't like to do that. So I always prefer to uh, not have to weave in any more tails, but you don't want to skip very far. If it's very far, I wouldn't do that because it will leave floats behind. Um, it can mess up your gauge. So I don't like to do that if it's very far behind. So let's keep going a little bit. One thing to note, so now I'm going to go to the row below, is because now I am working left to right and that is not really comfortable for me. Being right-handed to work this way so I can actually turn my work upside down and now I can work a lot more comfortable. My V's are right here. There's one V, here's another V. So I'm going to go behind because I find it much faster to 
do a sewing method rather than a just go down and pull it all the way through and then come back up and pull it all the way through. I like to do a down up in one motion. Okay, so what do you do when you run out of yarn? I don't want to work until this yarn is so short that I can no longer weave in the end. So I'm going to stop here. I'm going to make sure my yarn is ending in the back. And now I can weave in my ends behind this motif. If I were to weave it in, in just the bare section of yarn here, then you might see some of that through, through to the front. So I'm going to just go on an angle and pull the tail through working diagonally across the back of my fabric. I'll work one direction and then I can work back the other direction or I think I'll just work this way. And I just wove in that end. And I will just trim that off. I don't like to trim mine so short because then it could just end up working its way to the front and flipping through and would have a tail like this in the front. And then I do the same thing with the other end. You can see where I carried my yarn here. I'm just going to work in the other end. Now I just add in a new piece of yarn like I'm starting from the beginning and just continue on working. And that is how you do duplicate stitch.